Hey folks, welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use Xcode's sprite animation system. I'm not going to cover what you need in order to create a complete game. All I'm going to do is look at what's involved in getting uh, a simple character working with some basic sprite based uh, animations. So in particular, just to get a preview of what we're going to do, we're going to create our little character here. This is from my current game, Word Monsters. Uh, and you can see that we've got uh, several frames of sprite-based animation happening. So let's go ahead and see how we can create that. So I'm going to close out of this, which is my complete game. We're going to create a new project, which is going to be uh, an iOS game. And we'll call it Test 2D Animation. We're going to use Swift, we're going to use SpriteKit, it's going to be universal, we're not going to include unit tests or UI tests. And uh, just save it somewhere, maybe in your documents directory, wherever you like. We've now created that uh, project and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to maximize this screen. Now, during this tutorial, we're going to have a number of different windows open at various times. I'd like to commend to you Better Snap tool, which is really useful. So, for example, here I can maximize this window with one quick tap. Now, out of the box, the project that it gives us is going to run in the uh, iPhone simulator. I totally recommend that whenever you're doing any kind of games development, to please have handy an actual device. And once I've completed this, I'm going to show it to you actually running on a device. I'll export some video and splice it in so that you can actually see what it's like. Uh, because it's really hard to get uh, an accurate idea. So this is meant to be a simulator of the iPhone 6 Plus. You saw I had to actually scale it down so it would fit because the 6 Plus runs at three times resolution. So it's uh, over retina and it's actually going to scale that down to fit on the phone. So we've got some very, very dense pixels on that guy. So what that uh, template gives us is just this basic thing here where we can drop sprites and they get animated. Pretty simple. So let's X out of that and we'll go ahead and create a um, sprite based animation for this uh, setup. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is have a look at our scene here. Uh, this is the scene where the animation is going to take place. And um, I'm actually going to um, import some previously created um, graphics. Now I'm going to use a uh, better snap tool to put my window on the left hand side of the screen and I'm going to go over to the finder, create a new window, put that on the right hand side. Um, now uh, the artwork that I already created for uh, my game is over here. Um, the first character that we're going to look at is actually this uh, spaceship character and I have um, the artwork for the actual ship itself. Um, you can use uh, any art program. Um, I've used a, a combination of a number of art programs. And you can see here that we've got uh, the initial ship itself. And then um, we've actually created a number of layers here. So you can see that on the different layers, I've got uh, different graphics and by uh, animating over these different graphics we're going to get a different effect. Now uh, I'm just going to export this ship again so you can see what that looks like. File, export and it's just going to be that one layer. Inspire the spaceship. Now 
Now, as you can see, uh, I've already gone ahead and done these other ones, um, but um, this uh, is the largest artwork, and I typically do it this way. So what I want to do is create scaled down versions of this. So this is going to be my at three times. I duplicate it again. This is going to be my at two times. Now, I, the original artwork, as I mentioned, was done at uh, three times, so I didn't have to change that. But this is the at two times, and it needs to be two thirds of the size of the at three times. So I'll just after duplicating it, I'm going to resize it like that. And then finally, this uh, original one, I don't need to change the name of it. Uh, there is no at one times, you just use uh, the standard ending for that. So here we're going to make it 33%. Now, um, to take advantage of Sprite Kit's um, texture packing and um, uh, the new app thinning, you're going to need to create uh, an uh, actual atlas. So let's go in here. We're going to get rid of this existing spaceship. Um, you need to take a bit of care in here because if I press delete at the moment, what that's going to do is actually delete this whole assets folder. I don't want to do that. So I recommend if you're editing stuff inside of here, use the remove items. First is create my atlas. So new Sprite Atlas. And then inside of there, we'll call it the um, ship sprites. We'll just ship, ship will do. Folder can be called ship as well as the sprite. And then I'm going to drag that in. And you can see that what it's done is it's actually created all of the three times and it detects that knowing that the original artwork was labeled appropriately. So you don't have to do anything special to get that. Just drag it and drop it and it should work. I'll move that blank one out of there. And I'm going to do the same for all of these other windows. I'm going to drag them into here. Um, now we've got all of the stuff that we need to create our animation. Jump back into our scene file and in here, I'm going to maximize the screen again using Better Snap tool. And let's restore this right hand tab. Now, from here, uh, I want to create uh, our ship sprite in the middle of the screen. I like to make sure that I label everything with actual proper names because you're going to need these. We won't use it for now, but when you're locating stuff programmatically, we're going to do everything for this inside of our, um, our one file. This is actually our game scene here. So inside of our game scene, we have a ship. See how much easier it is to navigate this hierarchy when you've got things labeled appropriately. So I can just call that ship and I get my ship. Now from here, what I want to do, let's just check that that runs OK. Um, run it on our simulator. It is. Add a new set of sprites. Make sure they're at zero. And we'll parent our windows onto our ship at zero. Uh, and it's going to be windows. Now we got, um, we actually got a number of sprites in here. So we've got ship windows zero through four. Typically what you'll do when you're setting up your um, images initially is use the first one like that. 
and that's going to give you um, a way of just anchoring it in the correct position so if you've got a walk cycle you're probably going to choose the middle one where both feet are sort of on the ground um, just choose a frame that's uh, probably the most centered frame for your animation sequence and make that animation frame zero so now what we want to do is add an animation to that so we want to have our windows cycle through so for that um, we want to go down here to the very bottom one which is animate with textures and to get this to work you have to drag it out of there and into this section underneath. Notice that if this is not expanded, let me just delete that and redo it again. So if that is not expanded, you will not be able to drag it into here. It's actually got to go into the expanded part of the sprite that you're adding the, the animation to. So in here. Now that I've created uh, the animation, I need to tell it what images to use. Now notice it doesn't even start with the base image. It's actually going to start with um, only whatever images you supply to it. Um, now you might think that what you could do is um, you could drag out stuff from out of here uh, into this images folder. Um, that does not work. It's really kind of weird. So for example, if I would have, um, don't, don't do this, I really don't recommend doing this. You can add images like directly in here. Um, and now I've got a ship image that's just part of my project. And here's my game scene. If I had an image, I could drag it over and put it into the scene or whatever um, without animation will I believe whoops select my animation so I've got my images here that are gonna be part of my animation and I think I can actually drag a ship in there like that don't do that um, it looks like it will work but you're gonna get really inefficient results because every one of those images is going to be a whole separate texture in your texture memory and that's not what you want so let's delete that out of there move it to the trash and instead we're actually going to use these ship images out of our um, uh, atlas so what's going to happen at runtime when um, iOS uh, when this is compiled for iOS uh, the Xcode um, build process is actually going to compile this down so that all of these uh, images in sequence actually form into a single large texture atlas which is a large image uh, that's all going to get loaded into memory at once and under the hood uh, the metal rendering system is going to be able to reference into this single large texture um, and it's going to give you a much more efficient result uh, especially on uh, older hardware for actually rendering your animation getting the animation really smooth and fast so this is why you want to use uh, your Sprite Atlas, which is what this um, top level folder here is. So remember I went here and I did new Sprite Atlas, not new folder. I did new Sprite Atlas. So when it compiles this, it's actually going to generate these into an atlas. And that's what we want to use in our final animation. So how do we get our different windows into our animation? Well, the key to it is actually this media folder down the end here so I select my animation there whoops so animate and I've got my images window there and in here if you've got a lot of animations in a game you're gonna have a lot of trouble finding the ones you need so just type the actual name of the animation there like that and then you're going to select all of the animations that you want and just drag them up and it'll form a blue line here like this that allows you to uh, actually add them into the animation so now we have created our animation so let's see that running so we're previewing it there 
Notice it only went once and it was also a bit slow. So the first thing we're going to do is like we could actually drag. You may have noticed that Xcode's um, game editing tools, they're pretty powerful, but they're also kind of a little flaky and buggy and they're really annoying to use at times. So we're going to uh, loop this an infinite number of times just by clicking this little button here with the infinity symbol on it. Now we've got a continuously cycling window which is what we want. So in here the other thing I'm going to do is change the duration of this to 0.5 seconds. So if I'm making a smaller duration what I'm doing is saying each set of uh, images because um, I've got like four or five images in my set. Um, so each one of those is going to display um, one tenth of a second. So there's a of total is 50 um, uh, tenths of this is five tenths of a second in the total sequence and one tenth of a second will display for each of them so uh, that number there is basically the total length of one cycle of our animation so by making it smaller you make the animation run faster if that makes sense so we can see that we've got a nice flashing ship window now so if we run that in our game, just take a second to bring up the emulator. Uh, there's our ship with its cycling window. Now, um, I'll just mention a couple of other quick things. The first thing is that um, sometimes you actually want to have um, a different sequence. So you can actually um, delete out um, individual elements. So I don't want the blank window to appear there. I just want it to continually animate around. So let's see what that looks like. We'll preview that. So now we don't have the black um, window stage at all. That's our zero. And instead we have the constant um, uh, animating colored window. So you may find that with your animation frames that you've got actually got to change the way they work uh, to get the result that you want. Okay, so that's um, a relatively simple character. Um, I will just mention one other thing. There's currently a bug in... Um, so if I open my ship there and file open as a layer jump inside here ah oh. I'm just going to open a uh, ship thing here with my image editing program. The GIMP's free, by the way. Pretty nice. Uh, and then I'm going to open the windows as a layer. Now you notice something. Um, what I've actually done here is that um, this layer is actually a lot smaller. Uh, than the other layer and normally what I would do when I'm 
uh, editing my images for my game is I would just export the whole thing and allow the texture packings program to delete any um, transparent pixels that are outside of uh, the image. But right at the moment, there's actually this really obnoxious bug with uh, Sprite Kit. And um, it's actually causing um, uh, some rendering artifacts. So this bug is actually making it pretty difficult to use because normally this would work with the windows being the same size um, and you'd get the correct result. But as a workaround for now, what I'm doing is actually um, uh, editing off all of those transparent pixels just to get rid of that problem. So check that on my YouTube channel if that's what you're looking for. So we're going to do a more complex frame-based animation now uh, using this character here. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing again to create the different sizes that I need. Resize that to So as a quick check, um, you can have a look at the dimensions down the bottom here. Um, I'm using Finder to just inspect the dimensions. So at uh, the base resolution, which is going to appear, say, on older iPads, it's 150 wide. Uh, at two times, it's 300. And then uh, at three times, it's 460. So yes, we know that these are correct. Sometimes when you're working with a lot of these different sized um, images, it's very easy to get uh, messed up and get the wrong kind of um, uh, the wrong sized images, which I've done myself many times. So just a quick check there. Okay, so here I'm going to create our. Um, Waggly tentacle monster, tentacle monster, and again, I've got all of my textures. I'm just going to drag those into my sprite atlas. Oops. Just be careful to use remove. Try that again. And delete that spot, which we don't need. Okay, so we've now got our body. And if we click on these individual items, we should see the size there. So 150, 300, and 400. So um, that's a quick check to make sure. Now the same issue applies here. Um, these textures normally, um, I would have uh, exported them all as layers from the one uh, image program. And what I would have got is um, these images would have had a lot of transparent pixels around them and when the sprite packing algorithm inside of Xcode exports them it would have trimmed off those transparent pixels so we wouldn't have been wasting any 
text your memory. However, with this current bug, I've uh, preemptively actually pruned off those um, transparent uh, pixels. And that is just purely at the moment to work around that bug. If you come across this video and that bug uh, is fixed, then you can go back to doing it uh, the way everybody else does it currently, which is to just simply export them all as layers. And I will just mention actually, um, here's my um, file in GIMP. There's a really, really useful uh, extension. I can't really cover it now because it uh, takes a bit to go into, but there's you can export all of your layers as PNG files using a Python script, which you can add to GIMP. So just look for export layers as PNG and you should be able to find how to do that. And that'll give you all these separate files. So now we're going to create our tentacle monster. Um, and I'm going to do that by adding a new scene file uh, into our program. So it's going to be a sprite kit scene. And we will call it tentacle scene. And um, as you can see, we've got a separate file here. It doesn't really matter what the proportions of this scene are. It can actually be anything you like. Um, at the moment, the scene is 1024 by 768, but um, it's only your main scene that you're going to use. We're going to actually going to use this scene as like a little grab bag to get our stuff out of. So we're going to call this um, our tentacle monster scene. We don't want a camera in this because it's going to be just used as a resource file. Uh, now I'm going to add into here a sprite, which I'm going to put at zero, zero. And this is going to be body of our monster and it's going to have the tentacle body like that. Make sure it's centered at zero. And now we're going to add on to that the uh, actual waggly tentacles. So they will go there. And grab our tentacles like that. Now, uh, at this point, um, as long as you don't have uh, the cursor inside a field being edited like that, so if I come out here and just make sure I have that selected, I can actually hold down the Alt key and move it up and down using the cursor keys. That can be a little bit nicer when you're just trying to position something. So I can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out in the scene editor. And now I've got my tentacles uh, positioned pretty much how I want them. Now there's two ways I could import this into the scene. One way would be uh, to actually use a reference. So I could put it up here like that. And I could say this is going to be a reference into our tentacle scene, and that would put our monster in there. Um, that's pretty valid. The other way to do it is um, that we're actually going to programmatically load it. So let's just see what that looks like. You know, tentacle monster dot remove from parent because remember even though uh, we've loaded a scene the body is part of that scene even though that scene is not anchored into the scene that's currently being displayed so we're actually going to remove it from the loaded scene that we've just loaded in the line of code two lines above then we're going to add it into our new scene set it to wherever that we tapped on the scene. Hopefully that will work. 
Generally, you wouldn't write code like that because it does actually take a bit of time to load in a new scene off, off of one of these SKS files. And you wouldn't want that delay, um, but it's okay uh, for this test. Hopefully, let's see. Hopefully, this will work. It'd be kind of annoying if it didn't. There we go. So wherever I tap, I get a monster. Nice. Okay, so let's have a look at our tentacle scene. Now the reason the um, legs aren't coming is because we have not made them part of our body, so we want to make them parented onto there. And this is our tentacles. Always name everything. So now what we're going to do is set up an animation. So as before, we have to expand out our tentacle node, add in the animation, click onto here and clear out our filter and we're going to add them in as part of our animation like that. So this is what that looks like. So we've got some waggling tentacles, they just waggle in and then they stop. So what we want to do is actually copy that. So I'm going to press Command C, Command V, which will copy a second copy of the animation. And then I'm going to reverse this. So now what we get is waggle in, waggle out, which is just what we want. Um, I'm just going to try to speed that up. Now if you select both animations, you can actually make changes where uh, the animations are the same kind. So these are all <coughs> uh, sprite-based animations, so I can change the duration of them all at once. So I'm going to make it 0.4, so it'll move a bit faster. I'll increase the scale so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on here. Try animating that. Now we've got a nice little waggle in and waggle out. Now if I select both of these and then click the repeat button, I can loop all of them. And you can see that it's got this little bracket symbol. That's meaning that when I apply this looping, I'm going to apply it to all of them. Now notice something here, there's actually a little kind of pause, like it goes in and it goes out. And the reason for that is that when I run this animation, I start from tentacles 0 all the way to 4. And then I go to this one and I go 4 down to 0. So what sort of happens is you get a double up that between these two we spend two frames of animation in, in the fourth state. And then between this one and its cloned copy, uh, we're going to spend two frames in state zero. So you can experiment around depending on how uh, you've got this set up. But what I'm going to try doing here is um, I'm actually going to let it double up in four, but I'm going to delete out zero. So there's only going to be There'll be a zero animation at the end of this one, but I'll take it out of the beginning of that one. So let's see what that looks like. It's just a little bit smoother, right? So we don't pausing so much uh, when we get to that um, peak of the animation. So I think that's about what I want. 